The degree to which EVs make inroads into the transport sector both depends on and influences commodity markets across the board. With Wood Mackenzie's coverage of energy, metals, and chemical industries, we've taken a holistic approach to the questions defining and raised by EVs. So one of the main factors to consider is following battery costs. So what we've seen up to now is basically a trade-off between range and affordability when it comes to EVs, which meant that EVs with a long driving range were very expensive and they were more or less limited to the luxury car market. But what we're seeing now is a release of this new generation EV models that have an increased range at a purchase price that is more affordable. And so we've done cost comparisons between EVs and gasoline cars. And what we've seen in essence is that because of this improved battery technology and these lower battery costs, these models are becoming more competitive in the medium-sized car market. And that car segment is simply a bigger slice of the overall car market. Now, the other factor to consider is that U.S. automakers are facing very strict regulations when it comes to fuel efficiency of these cars. And that's in the form of federal CAFE standards. Now, the government doesn't dictate exactly how the automakers should meet these standards, but the electrification of the auto fleet is one of those options. And so government policy, in essence, is another driver behind this EV momentum that we're seeing right now. So today we see many Asian countries are proactively promoting the development of EVs, with China leading the way, and followed by other major economies in the region, such as Japan, South Korea, and India. EV sales in China have increased over 20 times since 2013, but the fact is that the share of EV sales is still quite marginal at less than 1% in 2016. Even in China, where subsidies are high and numerous policy incentives such as buying and driving restrictions exist, so with current size of the EV market, we do not think EV can have a material impact on oil demand yet. So the potential ban on the conventional ICE cars announced by China and India could potentially boost the electrification of the road sector, but specific policy measures are still lacking. We expect EV to capture 15 to 20 percent of China's car sales. Second, we expect EVs to replace about 7 percent of Asia's passenger car fuel consumption, which is about 700,000 barrels per day, this will certainly bring forward peak oil demand in the region. Well, electric vehicles account for around one in every 400 cars on European roads. When EVs are able to exhibit sufficient range and reliability at an affordable price to compete effectively with conventional ICE cars, they will move into the mainstream passenger car market. We expect EVs to do this sooner in the upper end of the market, but it's a much bigger challenge to compete in the entry-level market where ICE cars are cheaper and have better fuel economy. Hybrids will become increasingly important over the next decade to meet more stringent government fuel efficiency and emission standards. By 2040, we forecast that battery electric vehicles will make up about half of all car sales in Europe and account for around one in five cars on European roads. This would displace around 20% of road fuel demand from European passenger cars. But conventional ICE cars could still be a feature of the vehicle stock for a further 20 years as existing cars are only slowly scrapped. Well, China, Europe and the US currently account for most of the sales of EVs and we believe that they will continue to dominate the market through 2035. And what this means is that most oil demand lost to EVs will occur in these regions. But what's interesting is the impact in the US. So US conventional cars use more oil than, for example, cars do in Europe. And that's because they're driven further and because their fuel efficiency is lower. And what this means in summary is that when we replace a conventional car with an EV in the US, we tend to displace more oil. To understand the economics of EVs versus internal combustion engines, our metals teams are working toward building battery cost estimates, starting from mining operations for lithium and cobalt. Our power analysts are working on the implications on system-wide generation 
as power associated with charging ramps up, as well as the retail charging solutions offered for consumers as utilities and technology companies respond and at what pace to this evolving market. Our oils teams are considering national, state, and local policy decisions, from U.S. CAFE standards to European ICE bans to city licensing costs in China, as they frame both company and customer economics and options. In addition to the cost side, we're watching consumers themselves to understand whether the Chevy Bolt and Tesla Model 3 in the U.S. or new BYD cars in China answer legacy questions about the showroom to highway EV experience. Global coal and gas demand has disappointed with slower growth over the past few years and more competition from renewables, while gasoline demand has lent support for oil. Could EVs change that competitive mix long term between oil, gas and coal? If it does, the cost of keeping pace with fuels and infrastructure necessary to support EVs could ultimately undermine the long term potential of these cars.